So I would never tell anyone I was straight, and I wouldn't, you know, deny that I was gay, but I would be, I was like, became an expert at avoiding it going to that question at all. In celebration of Pride Month, we have a special guest joining us today to talk about his journey as the first openly gay artist on a major record label in country music. T.J. Osborne is the lead vocalist of Brothers Osborne. Together with his brother, John, they won multiple awards, including a Grammy. They are also the reigning CMA and ACM Vocal Duo of the Year. We could talk about his accomplishments in the band all day long, but right now we want to shine a light on his experience as an artist in the LGBTQ community. TJ made history last year when he came out in a Time Magazine article. This was a big step not only for himself, but for country music and for all the artists who fear that they may not be accepted for their sexuality. He's hanging out with us today to talk about what it was like to share this part of himself with the world and how it changed him for the better. Please welcome T.J. Osborne. Happy Pride, by the way. Thank you. Glad you're Hi, here. I'm, I'm glad I, I am here as well. Yeah, yeah, it's so good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Okay, so we want to be clear because last week we had Tyler Hubbard in here all by himself. You are not launching a solo career. <laughs> <laughs> no, not right now. Not currently, no. Wait, somebody get John on the phone. <laughs> you and John. No, uh, trust me. Honestly, <laughs> it's hard doing this. I could not imagine. I mean, solo artists that are doing this. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. At least, you know, if there's a day where I'm off, like John's there to kind of swoop in. and it's, <laughs> right, it, right, it is, right. it is a, a, a collective effort, that is for sure. We already have you and John tentatively on the books to come back when there's new okay. Brothers Osborne music. Yes. So just Which for we everybody. Which work, we are currently working on. So Great. There'll be some soon. Great. Do we have, you said soon. We don't have like dates or anything. No. Okay. Yeah, no. Like, no. You guys have no to dates. try to get the, we <laughs> no have dates. to try to get the team. I do. I'm like trying to pull like it out of you. No, you know, good. here's what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, so we do want to talk because, you know, your coming out story, your decision to stay in the closet, you had so much that was on your mind. Man, I think about it now, and I'm like, 2015, you guys put out the video for Stay a Little Longer. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting now. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. I I think everyone else in the music community, too, is like, you had an interracial couple. You had a same-sex couple in that video, and it was making headlines. Yeah. Why was that so important back then? Well, that you I mean, to I, I always knew that when I was going to come out, I, John and I had had that conversation. Um, we just had a finding kind of the perfect time to do it, which, you know, never is exactly the perfect time. But um, that video, we, we kind of wanted to really just challenge our fans that we had at that point and really see kind of like, hey, if the type of fans we want – um, or the type of fans we're going to keep, they would have to be okay with these things, which seems really crazy to that you would have to like, because I mean, at the time, it was just an interracial couple. There right. was people speaking up against that. People were really mad that we put a gay couple in there, uh, like with death threats, and it was and very intense. What? It was actually worse then. I, we had way more blowback about that in that video than when I eventually uh, came out. It was a, It was like a really... It was kind of baffling. Did that kind of impact your decision on when to come out? Because at that point, I'm like, okay, you know, looking back at it, I Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that could have been a good time. But then, obviously, if you're getting death threats from a video. I always wanted to do it at the height of our career um, because I didn't want it to be seen as opportunistic. You know, then it became a time where I decided to come out and um, was really based off of like, I don't know. You never know when you're at the height of your career unless you're on your way down. So I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, here I, and then, and then again, I'm like, well, then I feel like if I do it then, it's going to be seen as kind of jumping the shark and me trying to get headlines because I'm not relevant anymore or whatever that is. So I was overthinking it a lot, but at the same time, I did want it to be done kind of in a time where we were, yeah. were, were on a roll. And I, I kind of felt like that moment was. The, the moment that we chose. You know, I think going through all of that, it was um, it's, it was a lot to process. And I, I mean, it, and it still is something I, I, well, I don't process it as much anymore, but once I finally came out, I was, there was a lot to process there of like, um, you know, like how, once again, how visible do I need to be? You know, is, is am I talking about it too much? And, and, and those are, over time I would realize, you know, it's, I didn't want to talk about it. You know, we wrote Younger Me, I didn't um, want to write about it either, and these things just kind of naturally just found their way. And of course, I was I was uh, over analyzing everything, mm. and I just had to kind of take it a day at a time and a step at a time, and everything kind of I thought fell into place 
um, kind of a, almost in a serendipitous way. So I was at your show here in Nashville at, at uh, Ascent. At Ascent. Okay. And I will say the moment of younger me was I'll never forget that. Oh. And I remember being, you know, with my friends um, that you know from Orlando. Mm-hmm. We all went. And just the the video, all of it, you addressed the crowd and you thanked everybody just for, like, being on your side. And I just remember being like, that must feel so freeing, so good. That song is so powerful. Thank you. It's yeah. so powerful. It's so wonderful. Talk to us about Younger Me and how long after you came out publicly did you write that song? Uh, we uh, It was shortly after, um, uh, maybe a month or so. And and as I said, I, I knew I would feel free, but I didn't know how I was going to actually feel, like how invigorated I would feel and how like, wow, like I just felt, I, I just, I felt like a brand new person. I really did. And, um, and excited to live my life is, is now who I am and, um, or who I've always been, but haven't been able to uh, live my life that way. So Kendall Marvel, uh, came into a riot with my brother and I and, and, um, had, had this, t- this, this title, uh, younger me and, Instantly, I just was like, he was kind of about to give his idea of it, and I don't even know if this was what where he was going with it or not, but I was like, it instantly was like, oh, my God, because I had kept feeling that entire time that I wish I could just, I wish I could have seen me now years ago, and I wish I could talk to my younger self and be like, man, like, you're going to have it really hard, and you're going to be hard on yourself, but you're going to eventually come to a place where you like yourself, and you're happy with your life, and um, and I, you know, I think that's a thing that everyone or most people go through. And so John immediately, same thing, you know, John obviously has been spoken very publicly about his, um, uh, you know, some of his mental health, um, trials and, and, uh, it was a very same thing for him. He was very, you know, self, um, critical and, um, and then Kendall, his son is gay. And, um, so we were, I was like, man, this is like kind of perfect you know, I think we, all of us together and we wrote it, we were just like crying and it was like, we knew it was one of those moments where you just knew it was special, mm-hmm. not out of the sense of like, wow, sometimes you get done with a song, you're like, this is, this could be a huge hit, yeah. you know, or mm-hmm. this is going to be fun live. It was like, this means a lot to me and it meant a lot to John. And it just felt like this is one of the most impactful songs I've written for me. And um, and to be able to go out and perform it and have that moment and have people relate to it and feel that. I've had so many people reach out being like, man, I wish, you know, this, I wish I, you know, I feel like I wanted to hear this song my whole life. And, uh, and I felt like I wanted to say it. And now because of this freedom, I can. And I can talk about other songs that I have, some of the depth of those songs that maybe, you know, like 21 Summer, for instance, was a, um, a song that was written that's, you know, obviously I wrote it with Craig Wiseman and my brother. They have their their own version of what that 21 Summer was. But mine was a, a guy that I met in Chicago the first time I kind of felt love and was like, you know, I resented it because, I once again, I went through heartbreak. I couldn't talk about it with anybody. I really hated it. And then it made me grow up. And I was like, wow, this I got on the other side of it and then it came to actually revere that relationship because it I learned a lot and it helped me in my next relationship. Um, and then that's kind of what that song is about and being able to talk about those things where you're like, you have no idea really what this is, the, that there's more here than we can really talk about. And I've always loved like when you go up and see artists and they can talk about the, this story and the backstory and that stuff. And mine was always like, like a steel wall, like nothing, you don't go behind the curtain here. Like it's, it's all out there. And, um, you know, and I, I would like to think that I'm, you know, I don't know, a, a pretty, complex individual maybe sometimes we're <laughs> annoying in an annoying way but not being able to ever go there and have any depth was um something really annoying for me is that's what i that's what i want that's what i like with other artists mm-hmm. and being able to have that and so younger me coming out having that thing of like this isn't about having a hit or this isn't about anything other than just having hopefully this is something that you can relate to and heal it's for this was for the soul and um uh and then obviously to I thought it was quite um, fitting that that would be the song that we would win our, our first Grammy. We'd been fortunate to been enough to be nominated um, many times before. But that being the first one, I just felt like it was just meant to be that way. Very true. Okay, before we let you go, you teased us earlier. 
where are we in the process of new Brothers Osborne music? Like, you're not going to give us a date, but we're not going to give you a date. You know, there's. I mean, honestly, have, there was by there, Halloween. There I mean, was some. So, the only thing I can really a, say something. is, um, we are not done recording. We have started the process of recording, okay. and um, there are some songs that we are really excited about, and we really want this record to be um, our best yet. So we. You know, we'll take however much time that needs is is the time we're going to give it. So we're not we're in no hurry. When you get the album done, come back and see us. Okay, please. Yeah, I would love that with my brother. You can bring John. John will come. Thank you, TJ. Thank you.